Ah yes, always a good day when a package comes from Oregon and Studio H software. Well, let's put the microphone down and see what this could be. Yeah, a little bit too tight to be a module, although about the right size. But let's check it out. Mm-hmm. Oopla. Back panel. What else we got in here? I'm not a fan of unboxing videos. I think they're fairly pointless. So we'll do this quickly. All right, we got a Bukla back panel with a USB port on it. Some kind of cool card with an EDAC power connector. This feels like a little pocket of screws. Probably for that. A couple of USB adapter guys. And oh, a cool Studio H sticker. All right, micro, regular USB A. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here. Arduino board on a nice and tall PCB, and some switches on there too. Okay, we'll take a look at this. And see what we got. Hey, there it is. Studio H WPM, standing for Wireless Preset Manager, installed in my case. I'll get into some details and caveats about the case size, etc., and some restrictions, but I know why you're here. You want to see this thing work, so let's not faff about and get right to it. What you do is you, you log in, um, it's a Wi-Fi server. You log in over Wi-Fi and you can change the Wi-Fi name and the password if you wish. We'll show that later. And this might be a bit difficult to see without it being blurry, but I will try. Instantly presented this page. And you can go through and bring up any preset you want at gigahertz speed over Wi-Fi. Look at that. And it it's Wi-Fi. I mean, I've, I've actually logged into this on my ele in my elevator outside. Um, just for just regular Wi-Fi. Look at that. Off we go. Fantastic, right? So let's get this back to preset with a name. Just to show something here if it is visible. There we go. Fantastic. And you can do it in landscape or portrait mode, up to you. That way it's easier. So, one thing uh, you'll notice is that the 206E preset manager did not reflect the changes that we are instantiating. And that's normal because the way these are coded is preset managers are masters and there is no master-slave relationship or communication between the preset managers. And they're just there to tell a module, hey, please retrieve or store data in your own memory so it's per module they don't store the module data they just say issue a command store or retrieve at preset x and the module does that which is smart because you can keep expanding a system without having to worry about running out of memory in one module right theoretically you could keep going um but what that allows you to do is See, it works. And what it allows you to do is there's that sample and hold or strobed mode that's possible by sending a pulse into one jack and a voltage into the other one. And just like on the 250E and the 251E, there's strobe mode. And that allows you to, in a sample and hold style, randomly select presets. And what you could do is leave the wireless preset manager set to, set to somewhere safe like preset one and then just go bananas, switching through all kinds of craziness in your system and then just hit recall on the your phone or uh, iPad or whatever it is your laptop and it goes back to a uh, you know a known state so that that's a nice fun application that I could see live making sense as long as you stop sending pulses in um, let's look at the caveats here 
this is my boops case it is two systems in one frame so the top part everything 296 e and above is an 18 panel case separate power supply separate i2c bus the lower 24 again separate power supply separate i2c bus they don't communicate electronically at all for my studio purposes that works fine so in this case we're just showing in this case huh, that's a good pun in this case we're showing it only in the top 18 and we're gonna move it down to the 24 and show it working with oscillators and doing other things along those lines. It's a very deep product, the more I'm looking into it. Um, again, there are two pages presented by the web server there, and um, the second page is pretty deep, and you can do all kinds of configuration involving polyphony, channel selection, etc., which we will play with in the 24 channel case. But I'm gonna to have to break this video into chapters. It's, it's, it would just be too long. I think this is even going to hit probably nine minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes this way. So we'll do that. And then we'll show kind of a fun example system in the 10 panel Buchla case that I have. And, you know, maybe just show a small system without using a Buchla branded preset manager. Caveats. You'll notice that it is tall in comparison to a regular power EDAC connector. So you need some clearance here. Now it, it fits in all Buchla Bemi branded cases, Busa cases, all the official ones that we know. But we don't know and we don't have any control over or insight into is SA Modular, Boops in my case, or anybody else making cases. We don't know where they're positioning this bus board. Is it gonna be, excuse me, is it gonna be too close to the top or the bottom to fit it in? Who knows? And in my case, I needed two millimeters of extra clearance. I actually took these screws out so that I could just pull the bus board out a tiny bit and then slip it underneath and then once it was it was in, it's fine, working great. And um, you'll notice that it is now, in many places, just skirting the bottom of this. So there's no more clearance that I could slip that in. And that's something just you'll have to be aware of and position it somewhere. Again, it can go anywhere in your case. It doesn't matter. It's just putting data onto the I2C bus. So uh, it doesn't have to be like I have it in an open slot just so you can see it. It could be anywhere. Now you'll see, and I'll put the dimensions here, the measurements here. You'll notice that it comes out pretty far. You will not be able to put something like a 291E over that spot. I think that's the deepest Buchla module out there. It won't fit over there. This module module frame is pretty deep as well. And it looks to me just eyeballing it. There's no way that that's going to be able to go over that. So something like a 2590, which is a single PCB, obviously would work. The um, 256E control voltage processor, the 285E, those would all work if you can position it behind the more shallow ones. Even this 206E is pretty shallow. It would fit back there. No problem. And again, it just has to fit on one of the connectors somewhere. So you'll, you'll figure it out. You just have to have a, a shallow module somewhere and it'll work fine that's the physical considerations and i think where this really will open up systems sorry for all the talking we'll get to it in the next uh, chapter here but showing some examples but the um easel k when that was launched i thought that thing makes no sense you have the world's most powerful and elegant modular module controller and it's got one preset in it right because there's no preset manager and you would have to put in a 206E or a 225E at the time. And thankfully, eventually, they did do the firmware card that turns into a USB uh, communication device. Now, maybe that would help, but uh, not so much for preset management. And then you had the 225H, which I believe does preset management. I've heard it mentioned on the forum, but it's not in their cut sheets. It, it might be in the manual. I just don't you know, follow the H series too much. I should look into that. But um, now you can actually have an easel K or a very small portable system without the overkill of a 225E MIDI decoder or the 206E with more mixer than you actually need in a preset manager. Although it's great to have still, but this way you have, um, you know, a nice little unit that fits inside your case. We're gonna. We're actually gonna see. I got a friend who's supposed to send me dimensions of the clearance in a, an official Buchla case. Uh, the easel cases. I don't know if there's enough room, but we'll check into it. So it's early days. I've had this since uh, yesterday, and just installed it today. So uh, hopefully it fits. But you have to keep that in mind. And I'm sure Doug is gonna keep that uh, once he finds out. He'll have that information for you. 
But hey, it's working great, super easy. We'll show some examples of a tiny system based upon my 10 panel case, and we'll stick it in the big case, and that, those will be in different chapters. All right, so congratulations, Doug, on another super cool release pushing the 200E series forward. Let's play around with it and see what it does. Thank <music> you.